Hello, my name is Vince Roman, the Technical Director at Burn Stainless, LLC. We have decided to produce a series of instructional videos in order to educate our customers about our exhaust and tubing products. This first video will be a discussion of metal tubing products and will cover the difference between tubing and pipe, the difference between seamless and welded tubing, as well as an overview of the various materials that we carry. Typically, exhaust systems are fabricated from tubing and not pipe. Although non-race turbo systems are fabricated from pipe sizes, since thicker walls are usually available in pipe sizes. Tubing is specified based on the outside diameter and the wall thickness, usually specified as a gauge. Tubing gauge and sheet metal gauge are not the same. They are close, but not the same. For example, 16 gauge sheet metal is 60 thousandths of an inch thick, while 16 gauge tubing is 65 thousandths thick. For the most part, the tubing size system is clear and very easy to understand. Pipe, on the other hand, it's specified on inside diameter, sort of, and a wall thickness, specified as schedule. Schedule 10 or schedule 40 are examples. So let's look at a couple of tubes and pipes. Here is a piece of 2 inch 16 gauge tubing. Using a caliper, the tube measures 2 inches on the outside diameter and a wall thickness of 65 thousandths of an inch. Here is a 3 inch OD 18 gauge tube. It measures 3 inches outside diameter and a wall thickness of 49 thousandths of an inch. It's a very simple system. Now let's look at a pipe example. Here is a piece of 2 inch schedule 5 pipe. It measures 2 and 3 eighths inch on the outside diameter, a 65 thousandths wall, and a 2.245 inch inside diameter. There is nothing 2 inch about it. And it has the same dimensions as a 2 and 3 eighths inch 16 gauge tube. So for tubing, if we know the inside diameter of the tube that we want, the outside diameter is given by the OD is equal to the inside diameter plus 2 times the wall thickness. Or conversely, the inside diameter is given by the outside diameter minus 2 times the wall thickness. Here is a table of 304 stainless steel tube sizes carried by Burn Stainless. For example, a 2 inch 16 gauge tube has a wall thickness of 65 thousandths of an inch and an inside diameter of 1.87 inches. Now let's look at a chart of pipe sizes that are used in the U.S. As I mentioned previously, pipe size is called out by a nominal inside diameter and a schedule. For example, a common pipe size used for turbo manifolds is 2 inch schedule 10. From the chart, a 2 inch schedule 10 pipe has a wall thickness of 109 thousandths a 2 and 3 eighths inch outside diameter, and a 2.157 inch inside diameter. The other complicating factor with pipe sizes is that the schedules do not remain the same based on the diameter of the tube. A 1 inch schedule 40 tube is going to have a different wall thickness than a 3 inch schedule 40 tube. The pipe system may have made sense at one point of time, but not today. And I am certainly happy that I am working mostly with tubing sizes. A question that I am often asked is, will a 2 and 8 inch OD tube slip over 2 inch OD tubing? You are now able to answer your own question. The inside diameter of a 16 gauge 2 and 8 inch tube is given by this equation, resulting in 1.95 inch inside diameter, which is less than 2 inch so therefore, it will not slide over a 2 inch tube. Well, how about a 2 and an eighth inch 18 gauge tube? Again, the inside diameter is given by this equation, which is 2.027 inches. 2.027 is greater than 2 inches, so yes, it will slip over, but it will be a very loose fit and would not work well as a slip fit in an exhaust. That is, a very leaky joint. Next, I would like to discuss the difference between seamless and welded tubing. Seamless tubing 
is used in critical applications and is very expensive. It is extruded from a billet directly into tubing and cold, cold drawn to size. The resulting tube is homogeneous, which minimizes the stress concentrations in the tube, theoretically allowing for higher pressure and structural radius. Welded tubing, on the other hand, is rolled from a flat stock material and, as the name implies, is seam welded to form the tube. Many of us are familiar with seeing seamed tubing at a local wrought iron shop with a big ugly weld seam, but this is a very low quality material and should not be confused at all with the welded tubing supplied by Burn Stainless. High quality tubing mills such as RAF go to great lengths to address the weld seam in order to produce a high quality tube. One common method is to draw it over a mandrel which cold works and stretches the tube, improving the strength and the dimensional properties of the tube. Another method used by RAF is called the micro-weld process. The tube is welded to fuse the seam without filler material, then it is hammer forged or roll forged to work to cold work the weld bead, which results in a tube that is structurally sound and dimensionally consistent. Welded tubing from a reliable supplier offers great performance, rivaling that of seamless tubing for a fraction of the price. Burn stainless uses RAF tubing whenever possible. Some aerospace applications may specify the use of seamless tubing, but in most other cases, welded tubing will do a fabulous job. RAF believes that their seamless tubing holds no advantage over their micro weld. And it should be noted that the requirements for seamless and welded tubing per ASTM 269 and MIL-T8808 are the same for most dimensional tolerances. In fact, the welded tubing requirements are more stringent for welded tubing, believe it or not. Most high-level exhaust systems are fabricated from welded tubing, whether it be Formula One or NASCAR Sprint Cup. So, Please do not be afraid to use welded tubing from Burn Stainless. Burn Stainless carries stainless steel tubing in 304 and 321 stainless alloys. 304 stainless is considered the workhorse stainless steel for exhaust fabrication as it is readily available in many sizes. It's well priced and exhibits great weldability. All 304 stainless tubing carried by Burn Stainless meets the ASTM 269 specifications for seamless and welded authentic stainless tubing. For higher temperature applications where exhaust temperatures are in excess of 1400 degrees Fahrenheit, Burn Stainless recommends 321 stainless. 321 is stabilized with titanium, which helps boost its high temperature strength properties. And for very extreme applications above 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, Burn Stainless offers Inconel 625. Please call us for more information on Inconet. The aluminum tubing that Burn Stainless carries is not intended for exhaust applications. It is an excellent material for other motorsports applications such as oil and water lines, fuel lines, as well as intake and intercooling plumbing. Aluminum tubing carried by Burn Stainless is all extruded in 6061 alloy and meets the ASTM 210 specification for aluminum tubing. I should also note that the straight materials carried by Burn Stainless, the straight 6061 aluminum, is sold in the hardened T6 condition. However, all of our bends are annealed and therefore if the T6 strength of, of the aluminum is required, heat treating would be needed after welding. I hope that this video has been helpful to you in explaining stainless and, a tube and aluminum tubing products. Stay tuned for future videos on our other products. And also, let us know if there is something that you would like to see us discuss. Burns Stainless, relentless innovation in exhaust technology.